tired of this culture vulture, man. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, Vladimir. Have no fear, Capone is here. Vlad the Culture Vulture TV. Salute, 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 peace. Roll call. Houston in here. Roll call. Yeah, you know, I got to have my say. Call this one here, JoJo Capone versus Vlad the Coach of Vulture TV. You know what I'm saying? Enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. We out here studying these streets, trying to clean the streets up. Every chance this coach and vulture get, he throwing dots or setting booby traps. You know what I'm saying? Some articulate enough to not fall for the banana in the tailpipe, and then some not. You know, I just seen a lot of people say, I was drunk, or he get them high when they come up there, and then get them to go in. Then I just seen a clip somebody sent me. He was talking to Boosie and saying, um, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, you have to, uh, basically lure lure guys in, you know, or lure people in with these interviews. Like he got a tactic, you know what I'm saying? So basically, I guess his tactic was to speak on my name to see if I was going to respond to him or not. But of course I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of him anyway. I don't see how so many people subscribing to him. And like I say, I see that uh, it was a point in time where the Indian uh, hackers and the Russian hackers was doing the, the likes and doing the, um, the, um, the subscribers and the followers. You know what I'm saying? They was, you know, paying. You pay them $15, $50, $100, and they give you a whole uh, package deal. You know what I'm saying? I always decline with something like that, being a business owner, and a label owner because I needed to know what the artist was worth. I don't want to trick myself into if 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 they if you know what I'm saying if I pay the hackers and they do a million views on a video, how many views did my artist really get? So I'm doing them a disservice if I fail for that game. You know what I'm saying? So uh I don't believe a lot of these guys likes. I don't believe a lot of their followings. I don't believe a lot of they subscribe subscribers. I don't believe it, you know, and that's be that's due to me knowing that you can pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know YouTube cleaned up a lot of stuff, you know, about them fake followers and subscribers and all that. You know, I do remember when they done that. But I see that nobody, you know, Nori, myself, uh. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think Lord Jamar went in on him. But then I think he apologized. I don't. I don't really remember. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm like, how you apologizing to this dude? Like, well, I ain't gonna say that because I don't remember if that was accurate or not. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I just know myself. My first dislike for him, as I always tell y'all, I'm here to support our culture. Stand up for our women, our children, and our elders. I live by that. I die by that. So my first run in with him was when Chella H, sister from Chicago, you know, me and her brother, you know, we used to run together in Ida B. Wells Projects. And um, she was, she rapped, you know, she was rapping. She got a, so she got a podcast going on right now, her and Bo Deal, called uh, Straight Drop. So she doing her thing. She got her own podcast going. So this was Twitter, like my introduction to Twitter, because, you know, a lot of the social media stuff, I had to have to have them, but I run accurate. I wasn't, I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So Twitter, that's too much time on your hands. I'm not going to be typing nothing all day. I got other stuff going on. So I had seen that he had uh, wrote a blog about her, or tweeted it, that her mixtape cover was the worst cover ever in his hip hop and all. And it's like, when I seen it, I'm like, who the hell, who he think he is? You know what I'm saying? Who he supposed to be? 
You know what I'm saying? That he, I mean, everybody got the right to their opinion. I'm not saying that. But that's why for the female, you know what I'm saying? For a woman, you know what I'm saying? Trying to come up and do her thing. I spoke up in her behalf, as a brother should do. If, you, if, if anybody see a woman getting mistreated and you a man or supposed to be a man, you're supposed to step up for her. Even if she wrong, even if she's doing something meaning like just curse this guy out, he's supposed to walk away. Now, I understand in some situations if a woman hit a guy, you still, you can contain her in some cases, unless you're just a little shrimp and she can overpower you, but you need to run. But don't fight her, don't hit her. Keep it moving. You know, so her her mixtape at the time was called The Abortion. You know what I'm saying? And she had her reasons for that or whatever, the name and the title. So he criticized heavily. And it's the thing that they do. If they have a bigger platform or more followers, basically you have the people that should be rooting for her. You got them clowning her or talking bad about her, you know, of decisions. For one, she a woman. If she wanted to decide to name her mixtape The Abortion, that was her choice. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see him post nothing about Mary Stranger. I mean, Mary, what's her name? Mary whatever, the eugenics lady. I ain't see him post nothing about her. You know what I'm saying? A lady, you know what I'm saying, that's from over with the Vladimir, wherever you from. She from Germany. She from over next door to you if you from Russia. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see you post nothing about her, you know, creating abortions to help eradicate the whole black race you know what i'm saying for y'all pure white skin i didn't see you do that i didn't see you post nothing about her if you want to act like you just a a guest in the culture and all this and that but you're a guest in the culture that's highly opinion opinionated you know what i'm saying and i don't want to go i don't like it no more I don't, i'm tired of seeing it i'm sitting back i can't chime in and tell brothers hey man you know, don't answer that question. He's setting you up, you know what I'm saying? Or, hey, man, the things you can't say will be used against you in the court of law if you're a little brother out here fighting the case and then you get on his on his channel and you start speaking, you know, as y'all seeing, they playing this stuff out in court. But he still want to run around like, well, my name ain't in the paperwork. Yeah, but your footage is in the, is in the courtroom. You see what I'm saying? And it's kind of like there's no disclaimers or nothing to help us to where is that the footage can't be used in no court of law a lot of these guys are artists you know a lot of these guys didn't got besides themselves a lot of these females and got besides themselves to where they speak on real life cases in their music and the judge is going to allow the da to bring that into evidence because he's going to call that evidence or that female DA is going to call it evidence. So now you're going to look around and they plan your rap lyric 30, 40 times in front of a jury that don't look like you. You know what I'm saying? The judge ain't caring nothing about you. And whatever the crime is that you in there for, they looking for a, a, a conviction. That's just how it go. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, this guy spoke on her, this is the worst mixtape cover ever, you know, things of that nature, you know. And I was upset about that. And I think when I saw Chella, I let her know, you know what I'm saying, and said, I don't, you know, I ain't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't appreciate him doing that, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I first was getting a load to these bloggers and how they do to get a following. You know, but because somebody, uh, because somebody call a mixtape something, you there to bash it. You can either like it or don't like it, or you can buy it or don't buy it. But of course, for me, always standing up for Chicago, I felt the need to step up in her place. And I personally knew her. I can personally look at her as a little sister. And basically, I'm taking up for my little sister. That's how I looked at it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think of it no other way. Now, down the line, just fast forward into today, you know, what he said about the minister. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his facts wasn't right. People got on him about that. And then supposedly his rebuttal was, oh, well, my following ain't go down, so I ain't going to apologize. So that lets you know what he think about us as a whole, 
how he feel about our culture as a whole, you know what I'm saying? And long as he can prosper from it and not losing no subscribers, he don't care. You see what I'm saying? Now, if he was to start to lose them subscribers, then he'd, he'd try to, I, I noticed what he tried to do. When he when he, when that heat came on him, when everybody started speaking out against him, then he, he started trying to hire other people to do the interviews for him, but it's still his platform. So that go once again, that go the banana in the tailpipe. You know what I'm saying? Um, at 10,000 sub, I should see a show from you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 10,000 subscribers. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I just don't like that. Like, let these youth rap the way they want to rap. If they want to take your advice, do so. But some people have to understand the things that you say can be detrimental to their career. You know what I'm saying? If I was to get on here and uh, Jay say, let the views match the likes, get them likes up then, you know, uh, rappers have to stop going on this channel. And that's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. So I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got, they acting like we don't got Nori. They acting like we don't have Gilly the Kid. That's probably two, three million people right there. So if y'all just do two interviews, you feel me? If y'all making it about y'all numbers, like I understand COVID can't, a lot of people ain't got no traction. You know, uh, they, they, they feel like they losing followers. So what do they have to do to stay relevant? So now they going after whoever got the subscribers. Just so happened for us in our culture, Vlad the Culture Vulture got majority of the subscribers. Uh, Adam22 got majority of the subscribers. Um, just for us, you know, in, in, in social media world. You know what I'm saying? They got the subscribers. So if we can flip that and get them subscribers to flip the script to um, Gilly the Kid and Wallow, to Nuri, you see what I'm saying, to M. Rec, to uh, Doggy Diamonds, to the Gangster Chronicles, you know, to uh, even to myself, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I still feel like y'all can get y'all point across. Y'all message will be heard. So I don't want to go for the cop out of, oh man, he got 4 million subscribers, so we need to, put, but you ain't promoting nothing. Uh, he, he, y'all getting on there, he and y'all about criminal cases and, you know, who got shot and do you know who did it and certain stuff like that. Y'all ain't getting on there like only when it's time to promote y'all mixtape. If y'all was, he probably wouldn't even do the interview. So y'all, it's just like y'all keep falling for the banana in the tailpipe and I'm sick of it all the way around the board. We got to be held accountable as well. You know what I'm saying? Dude don't care about us and our culture. He care about the money that comes from our culture. They tell us black melanated people spend a trillion dollars a year. We spending that money with everybody except ourselves. Everybody except ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 the aftermath is what's going on. So yeah, our kids is carjacking, our kids dropping out of school. Be and cause it's a lot of situations where is that the mother might be strung out on drugs. They she got her her housing apartment. So at least the kid got somewhere to go back and forth for shelter, but ain't no food in the house. Ain't no guidance in the house. The mother, the parent, the daddy might be in jail or dead. Look at our statistics. The mother might be strung out on drugs. So now these kids, they out here fending for themselves. So now they get a hold to a phone and they go into certain bloggers to see what they can. You know, you got a, a academics, you know, the war in Chirac and these savages and all this. You know, you built your whole career and platform off the off the hardship of our city, off the hardship and of us. You know, you now you now when people seeing um the sister uh Drea O, you know what I'm saying, they see the sister Drea O interview Duck Mother, Tuka Mother, Lil' Mr. Mother, now people having soft hearts because they seeing these mothers on here begging and pleading for y'all to stop killing each other like cattle. You know what I'm saying? And it's hitting it's hitting a lot of us hard. Because one thing any young man or any woman want to see is their mother cry. 
No, no, no child, I don't care what's going on, want to see their mother cry. So when them three sisters got on there and they were speaking and pouring their heart out to the streets of Chicago and beyond, we had to feel it. It was no way of looking past that. That's why I made sure I reposted the video. So for me, I was giving love and support to Dre O. You know, she was working for Revolt. You know, I done an interview for her over there at Revolt. So anytime sisters was trying to do something to get in position, I always lend a hand. You know, could I am I a person that can uh charge for my video or my interviews or my speeches? Of course I can. But I also had to do a good deed every day as well. So when it comes to the children and our culture and shaping this culture the rightful way, I'm always be there to speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I seen how Vlad tried to get the brother Mob James to say something ill about me, about the whole MC situation, and, and Mob James ain't fall for it. You see what I'm saying? So that's when I seen, I'm like, okay, this sucker trying to play the 21 fake out. I see what's going on with him. That's why I'm speaking on the sucker, or I never would speak on him anyway. You know what I'm saying? And and just because you you buy some 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 sisters, some um, just cause you rent, you dig what I'm saying? Some sisters that's prostituting don't make you one of us, man. You know what I'm saying? That ain't making you one of us. You know, any woman that's broke or need a few dollars and you paying, you a trick. You know what I'm saying? So you a trick off with these girls. And you have all kind of conversations with them about some some hustlers that they probably didn't dealt with or whatever. Now you making a list. You jotting down a list. And in some cases, you hoping you can interview the chick to give out dish the dirt on this guy. But you ain't going to put in there. You tricked off with her. You ain't going to do that. So let's act. Let's interview you now. Let's get you on the, on the hot seat. Let's, let me see if Vlad, tell Vlad, let me interview him. And let me see how he like that. Because I ain't going to cut him no corners. I ain't going to cut him no slack. I got access to all a majority of the chicks he tricked off with. You dig what I'm saying? So all that old ways that you go about doing your interviews, dude, I ain't with it. I ain't with it. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's distasteful. You know, soon as somebody die, he reaching out. What about the prevention? I'm about prevention. I don't want to see the next rest in peace shirt. I don't want to see the next rest in peace headline. I don't want to see it. I want to see, look how the city has evolved. The kids is out playing now. You can't even shoot a video in Chicago no more. You can barely shoot a video. Every video got to be somewhere inside. You know what I'm saying? What if you want to shoot a heartfelt video like the artist Chicago KO, he has a lot of heartfelt, deep type music. He ain't doing no gang banging music. But if he want to make him a video about the hardship that's going on in Chicago and he needs the girls to be jumping double dutch, he needs the little boys to be willing and they bite, it's damn near can't happen because you don't know when some shooting about to go on. So it's sick then. You know what I'm saying? So as quick as y'all bloggers is ready to report on our city. For one, you 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 reporting on a city that you never visited, you never been to, you're not hanging out on these blocks, and you really don't care about our people. So I just feel like stop speaking on us, period. We don't need y'all to speak us. You know what I'm saying? We need to help create something to where these kids can come together, play together, make music together, whatever they want to do together. But we got to do it from the inside. And y'all making our job hard. By giving the the them to by this what y'all do too, y'all play favoritism. So if y'all knew that it was a big GDBD war, y'all don't really care. Y'all just wanted the views. Why? Because y'all see that uh y'all see that every time one of the drill rappers put up a video, him or her has a million views in an hour, a million views in thirty minutes. So. As y'all being businessmen, in a sense, y'all saying, how could we profit off of their mishaps? I ain't going to look at it no other way. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I know what it is. So it's how can we profit off their hardship? 
you had uh what's them you had noisy tv you had uh they was in here talking about Chirac. You got Spike Lee coming in here talking about Chirac. You know, just everybody was, it was like a mockery to us that was really living it. You going to shoot a video. You don't, I mean, you going to shoot a whole movie, Spike Lee. I don't even know if you even hired no actors from here. You didn't imported people to come in here to portray us. Like, what's that about? You know what I'm saying? So, yes, we marched over there and shut that shit down. Yes, we did. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we don't want y'all out here, you know, trying to milk us dry. You know what I'm saying? We need real help trying to help these kids love each other. We we already know about the um the hate part. We 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 already a part of our own genocide. We don't need no help assisting it. You know, um they came to me, they say, "Hey man, we want you to be uh we want you to be a producer for uh, the, the the noisy documentary thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. So they come interview us first. The HB, it was on HBO at the time. So through they interview us. Now the part two, they was bringing on Chief Keith on that one. So uh, they was like, we want you to be a, a producer on the show. So I'm like, okay. I flew to New York. I went to their office. Uh, I met the owner. You know, they look now. All these guys, the owner and all of them was from Britain. Was from British. They from Britain or or London. You know what I'm saying? So these some Caucasian male owners of this TV network. You know what I'm saying? From over there. Now they want to come here with an office set up in New York, and then they want to come to Chicago. And film us. So all the, all the time I'm looking at this like y'all not about to come in our city and exploit us. So, you know, uh, who was that? Uh, VH1 MTV came in here. We took their cameras, took the cameras. And this ain't no secret. Like I really put on for this town. Listen, man. And if y'all don't believe me, uh, hit up, uh, What's the brother name? Um, I'm wrong for forgetting his name right now, but I'm so frustrated. But the brother uh, from MTV, but you know he had the dreads. He just cut his hair. What's the brother name? He from the Bay, from the Bay Area. I mean, you say y'all exploiting y'all selves. Yeah, in a sense, because the children don't they ain't, they ain't knowing no better. Sway, thanks, thanks, be, be well. So Sway, y'all ask Sway, who gave them their cameras back? Who gave MTV their cameras back? I did, even though I was promised something, but I didn't want what was promised to me. You see what I'm saying? Because my whole thing is y'all got these cameras in here, you know what I'm saying? What y'all doing? You know, who y'all who y'all checked in with? What y'all trying to film? So it wasn't that like I'm running opportunity away from here. I know that this opportunity ain't really official. Y'all just getting what y'all can get and y'all running. You see what I'm saying? So then, if it's a BDGD war and y'all only interviewing all the BDs and y'all ain't interviewing no GDs, now that's causing more, more friction. Let these brothers use the same platform to hash out their differences. But what was happening, you're going to let all the BDs talk and do everything they want to do and then the GDs on the shutdown side because y'all didn't play favoritism. That's not how it go. But that just showed me that y'all didn't care about us. That's all that show. Y'all didn't care about us. Y'all not going to call Dirk and then call Duck and try to see what we can figure out. How could we smooth it out? Y'all not doing that. I'm doing that. Other brothers here doing that. Y'all ain't doing that because y'all don't care. So for me, it's like, okay, if y'all making... 100 million, I mean, if y'all making 100,000 for a 45 minute set, bruh, rap about that now. You see what I'm saying? We know what the trenches was like. We, 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 y'all, y'all coming out of the trenches. So now let's pull some more of these young brothers out of the trenches. And I say that to say, we know who the hot boys is in the city. You know, so when the little young guys be beefing and they hot, you know, and, and, and they going everybody, you take them out of that environment and show them something different. 
That's why when you get Herb on there, you're going to get an intellectual conversation. You get Bibby on here, you're going to get an intellectual conversation. Now, some people mad, oh, Bibby, Bibby should have knew not to go on Vlad. I ain't gonna lie, some 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 people don't know that it's a council Vlad culture situation going on right now. Some people, some people miss the memo. That's how that's how I look at it. Some people miss the memo that we canceling Vlad. We he's he we don't need him. You know what I'm saying? He another cancer to our culture. Period. I don't see nothing that he's doing when it comes to any violence. No sincerity for real. He know he going to get paid for every person that sit in front of the camera for him. He knows this already. He knows it. He he won't start another channel. You know what I'm saying? That, or say he won't monetize on and then ask all these questions and do all that. He not going to do it. So it's like certain people are allowing these guys to just rape our stories. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the donation, Malcolm. They let these guys just t come in here and take our stories. I was upset. Al Prophet, a cool dude, you know, because I don't want to make it like it's no black against white thing and all this and that. Al Prophet was a cool, is a cool dude. You know, I met Al Prophet. I done an interview with Al Prophet. He's with Cuzzo. He was with uh um Cavario. Now, far as these street stories and the, and Don Diva, you know what I'm saying. That was Cavario. Kevin Childs have it now, which is a good friend of mine as well, good brother. And um, they was delivering and giving us the street story. So once again, we always had our own that we could have got our stories from. You know, Felon Magazine, Feds Magazine, Don Diva. We, we had that. You know what I'm saying? If it was in a DVD form, Smack DVD, and a host of others. Appreciate that, uh, Todd. You know what I'm saying? We we had that. We don't need the peop the counselors to the coaches to tell our stories. We don't need it. Our prophet, my my bones, I had to pick with the brother. He just did an interview about Nate Hill. These people ain't know nothing about no Nate Hill. They heard me speak on Nate Hill. It went viral. And once again, everybody started rushing to the to the um, popular titles, whatever, whatever, whatever stream, I mean, you know, whatever's going viral, they jumping at it. So he do a whole interview on Nate Hill, make it look all cute and fancy, you know what I'm saying? Which is cool. We, you know, spread the word. I ain't tripping. But then they use the likeness and use my picture in there, but then don't shout me out for saying, hey, salute JoJo. He put me up on this Nate Hillary and now I'm going to report on it. It's just the way you do things. You see what I'm saying? So, it's like, I, I, it's stuff like that I don't like. They never going to give you your flowers, bro. They not going to do it. Everybody with this industry, they'll sit back and watch all my lives and see how they can flip them. Or they'll watch live, see who I interview. Now they want to see if they can interview them. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, I understand with everything they making in competition. I understand that. I understand that. But, oh, I never want to leave out Star. You know, Star from Buck Wild, Star and Buck Wild Show. I never want to leave out Star. Star the guru to the all list to me. So I don't understand how Star don't have the 100 million subscribers. I don't understand that. I don't understand how Doggy Diamonds ain't got 100 million subscribers. And M. Rec having 100 million subscribers. Them was like the first dudes on the, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? With they shows, bringing them type of shows to YouTube. Which, you know what I'm saying? Doggy Diamond's doing a lot of great things. You know what I'm saying? He got his Doggy Diamond show. He got, some, he got the Gangsta Chronicles as well. You know what I'm saying? And he never not wanted to help anybody that wanted to get into this game. You know what I'm saying? Me, myself, purpose, purposely, personally, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Salute to Amina. Salute to uh, Just Be. YouTube reached out to them, and they wanted me to do a show for YouTube, like directly, like this, but for them, you know, with them, like on a payroll or whatever. So I was like basically cool, but then I thought about it. If y'all trying to have me stuck in some office space, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not going to be nowhere stuck. My life got to go on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to feel 
uh, confined to no one spot. You know what I'm saying? No, no nine to five and all that. I don't need to do that. So I feel like if I can get this phone and, and, and still go live from all over the world, I'm still serving my purpose. You know what I'm saying? So I basically declined that. You know what I'm saying? That YouTube uh, job, whatever it was going to be, I, I, I declined it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do it. Some people will say, why not? I just gave you why. I didn't have to. I didn't have to accept it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate them for having this uh, where I can do it now. Now, it's more brothers. We need more brothers and sisters. App builders. You know what I'm saying? I got an app builder right now that I'm working with. And uh, he has a great app. You know, he actually built the app for a guy, a Caucasian guy out of uh, Silicon Valley. He sold an app for five hundred million. He didn't get a brother a dollar. So my point of what I'm speaking about is keep getting mistreated in 2021. The oppressors, you know what I'm saying? Like they study oppressing us, and we keep falling for it. I don't. I don't like to be oppressed. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm one of them. I gotta be one of them Haitian revolutionaries. I got to be. That blood got to be in my veins. Because it's just my thought process is how I feel. I'm always willing to go up against the grain. And them was some of them in the Ethiopians was the only people that wasn't going for the oppressors. They wasn't getting oppressed. And right now to this day, billions of dollars that's been stolen from Haiti. They share the same island with the Dominican Republic. They then finally just let them put up a gate to divide the, divide the island, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? They let them divide the island. So I understand the minister, Elijah, spoke on separatism to, to the extent of let us fix ourselves before we go into the free world dealing with everybody else because we got to undo what was done to us. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, you know, you got the brother Dane Calloway. Hey, man, we natives of Americas. We the indigenous people. So you got a brother like Dan Calloway. He going to come with his fact checks. He going to come with a lot of stuff. He going to say a lot of us didn't come over here on those slave ships. Our people was already here. You know, uh, you can go to Sinetta TV. You got all type of doctors and scholars on Sinetta TV. And like I explained to Sinetta TV, I understand you, you, you still useful. You an OG. You been out on 125th Street in Harlem for 25 to 30 years. You know what I'm saying? pushing an agenda to our people. He get a lot of slack a lot of times, but like I was explaining to him when I went on his show and I did an interview with Dr. Professor Smalls, you know, these guys I wanted to talk to and get the knowledge from, I'm not too big to listen to nobody. I want to know who I am. I want to know where we come from. I want to know what to be able to call myself as a as a group of people or as a person. I'm, I'm interested in that. To where you got the generation now, they don't care. They don't really care about that. They like, slavery, what was that? You see what I'm saying? Or, you know, but it's slavery in all kind of ways. You know, the, the jail systems is slavery. They making you work in prisons all the street signs, car parts, and probably everything else, you refrigerator appliances, all type of stuff that you can think about is owned by the oppressors. And nobody's speaking on this. Everybody got a platform. Everybody got a podcast. I'm not hearing these dudes speaking on these real problems. Then we finally get Obama in the office, a mulatto male. You know what I'm saying? That he feel like he got to play 50-50 because I got a Caucasian mother and I got a South African daddy or Kenyan daddy. You know what I'm saying? East African daddy. If his daddy from Kenya or South Africa, I don't really remember. But you know what I'm saying? So now I got to play the play 50-50. You know, I can't say like I hate Caucasian people because my mama Caucasian. I can't say I hate black melanated people because my daddy black melanated. You know what I'm saying? So... He's stuck in the middle, as they call, you know, what they say. But I'm not going to say it referencing it to him. But you you know what they were saying when it, when he was voting and you seen all over everywhere what they was putting up there, you know, calling him or whatever. Um, he say he done as much as he can do 
for the people. You know, he was he be very critical about, you know, I done what I did for the people of America and around the world or whatever. But of course, black melanated people that's been uh that's been oppressed all these years been trying to figure out which politician going to get in here and say change these uh amendments these amendments a thousand years old why we can't change them they changing every other law to to fit the ghetto every other day every week every month but we can't change these amendments nobody spoke on who gonna take out of there that black people are one third of a human it's 2021 and that stuff is still in there that black people is one third of human no, no politician speaking on that. Like, come on, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, we might have a person like that was the comedian. What's the brother that's he be deep um, from L.A. D.L. Hughley. You know, you got him. He, he intelligent brother. He very articulate. He speak on them poli politics and stuff. Politics, as I say. He speak on them politics. You know, uh. I asked Sinetta TV because I seen that somebody was creating the issue. You know, I don't know if it was the fans or who was creating the issue between Sinetta and Dane Calloway. You know, it would be a great build, as they say in a conscious community. It would have been a great build. And Sinetta was feeling like he said, I think he reached out to Dane Calloway and Dane didn't respond or was figuring like Dane wouldn't do the interview. And I feel like that's a disservice to us as a people because Sinetta, if you got all this comedic history, you know, and you got all the scholars on speed dial and then Dane Calloway, like a, lo a, a like a, a loner cowboy, you know what I'm saying? That's saying, Hey man, we native to here, you know, we indigenous people. And, but he got all this knowledge of the indigenous people, you know, Sinetta, if you got a hundred million subscribers, them hundred million subscribers need to hear this information that Dane has. The people still confused. We still running around confused right now today. You know what I'm saying? We still confused right now today. Who are we? Where we come from? Then we know so many generations now down the line mixed up with all kind of everything. You know, so that's what's making a lot of people say, Listen, all that race mixing and this and that and ethnicity mixing, I don't even want to talk about it. That's what got people feeling like that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people not understanding that if you're born here in America, but you speak Spanish, you speak in the language of a colonizer. That's not a that's not nothing to be prideful of. You you basically speak in the language of your slave master. You named after your slave master. So it's kind of like no, nobody is stopping to think of this stuff. Everybody, yeah, Boricua, you know, uh, some people, you know, in New York, you know, in other places tend to try to be racist and prejudice. Well, I'm going to stop using racist, prejudice, because that's what it is. It's one race, the human race. So it's basically prejudice, but everybody quick to say everything racist, but it's prejudice. So to use prejudice against another human that's just the lack of knowledge that you have of yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't know that if I'm born in Chicago on the south side of town and I went to school and I was fluent in Spanish because they taught it there. But now I indulge into the, to the Latin culture because I'm speaking Spanish, but looking with my complexion all over the world, you're going to catch this complexion. I don't care where you go. You know what I'm saying? Whether they try to hide you on the outskirts or in the jungle, you're going to find this complexion that's going to speak that language of wherever they at. You got a lot of Africans, they speak in 9 to 13 to 16 different languages. You know what I'm saying? So we do know that we are some articulate group of people. We the first people. And we came up in a world where it got cruel. You know what I'm saying? People had to be survivors. You know, they had to survive in them cold climates once they traveled. And now that's when you get the flesh eaters. You know, you they had to survive. So you get the flesh eaters. They killing stuff. 
that's living to eat to survive. You know, in that climate, in that culture, in that culture, that's how they lived. But as you see with a with a gorilla, the strongest animal in the jungle, he alkaline. He got an alkaline diet, but the strongest. So when a person turn around and say, "Hey, man, Doctor Sabi gave us this same game." But people didn't want to listen. The first thing they say, oh, man, if you go vegan, you're going to be skinny. You're going to be like a skeleton. But you'll be healthy. So which one is it? Your heart is the strongest, is the most important muscle on your body. So if you're clogging it, all your arteries up with all this butter and plaque, you know what I'm saying, that's on um, starches, you're killing yourself. So my thing to the... Uh, FD, FDA, why, you know what I'm saying, why do they even allow this stuff? You see what I'm saying? They'll let you put a pinch of this and a pinch of that and call it organic. You know what I'm saying? But it's but if you read the titles, it's a lot of stuff that's terrible for you in there, in the ingredients. But it's, a, it's, it's being allowed to happen. So now we just going through, um, we just going through um, population control right now. It's about population control. Where they want to start at first? Africa. That everything is Africa. And it never stopped from the eugenics movement of abortions and let's kill this off this whole race. How could we kill off this whole race? How could we kill off this whole race that created us? So you want to, it's like you want to kill off the parents. Let's get rid of the parents. That lets you know something wrong right there. Let's get rid of the parents, the people that, that originated us. We want to get rid of them that bad. White power, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We want, to, we want a pure white race. How you going to get it? Then you had, you got, you had uh, Hitler. You dig what I'm saying? He fighting for something. He ain't even blonde hair and blue eyes. He ain't even got blonde hair and blue eyes. You see how psychologically these people are? And wicked, you know what I'm saying? How? You feel me? Like how? How you wanna? How you wanna a a blonde hair, blue eyed race? And your mama and them from Austria? You feel me? You ain't even from where you you feel me? It's crazy. So he wanna exterminate a whole group of people that don't, that don't have blonde and blue eyes, and he don't even have it. That's just you gotta just think about this stuff, man. And this lady, she want to, um, with the eugenics founder, you, who was in heavily support of her? Hillary Clinton. Now, how anybody that look like me going to vote for her? She said this one of the, this her idol. She said the lady that created the eugenics movement um, under the pretense of killing off the whole African race is her idol. But y'all want me to vote for her, for Hillary. Y'all got to be out y'all mind. Billions of dollars donated to Haiti. They never received a dollar. Who did they say had it? The Clinton administration. Why do they got it? Why they got anything to do with what's going on in Haiti? Neither one of them in office no more. How? Who's allowing this? Then soon as Wyclef tried to run for president, that went haywire. First thing they do came with the smear campaign. All he's stealing. All he's stealing. You know what I'm saying? Politics. It's crazy. I don't understand it, man. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like as a whole, we got to come together, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It ain't being no sucker because you don't want to kill your brother or next door neighbor. It ain't you ain't being no sucker for that. Planned Parenthood, right? You don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to, you don't want to have to wake up and just because you got on some jewelry, you gotta hide it because you feel like a brother look just like you gonna take it or a sister gonna set you up. For her baby daddy and her brother and them to take it. Look at the stuff we be having to deal with when just to even come outside. I don't want to pull this car out, you know, with no rims on it and park it. 
nowhere because I, I can get jacked for it. Like, why are we living like that? The the person that have too much more than you, this person might just save his money for three to four years to buy these rims. But when you go to go to rob, he ain't even got $10 in his pocket. So you didn't gave this brother a traumatic experience by upping a pistol on him, taking his car. You know what I'm saying? You didn't kill this pride. You didn't kill this pride. His pride is gone because now he got to look at you as one of his own doing this harmful thing to him. And saying to himself, if he's intelligent enough, bruh, if you need money, Brinks, trucks, banks, thank you, e. Uh, brings trucks, banks, currencies change. That's where the money at. So you got enough heart because I guess it's easy. You can catch somebody on a, a dark street. The lights is out. So, you no, know, it's a coward move. You got a gun. You hoping he don't, the person that you finna draw down on don't got one. Or as they say, the quickest on the draw, the first one got the draw. That's who win. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you going to take something from them, from this person. Ain't going to be broke tomorrow. Even if you took $100, you back broke tomorrow. So you didn't just put five to 10 years, if you would have got caught right on the spot, going to jail five to 10 years for $100. It, it's, it, it's not adding up. It don't make sense. You know, if you got a drug habit, you need to try to kick that drug. Because what, what it lets you know is you can't afford no habits. So if you can't afford no habits, you don't need to be smoking. You don't need to be drinking. You don't need to do none of that. But because they all under the influence, somebody trying to speak to them from a conscious mind, a pure heart, they really missing the message. Sometimes you can run up on a person that's a junkie or addict, as they say, and say this stuff that I'm speaking, and they'll cry tears right there. And they tell you their life story. Man, I used to be Valley Victoria. I was the best dressed. But man, I was dealing with this woman. And she was getting high and she introduced it to me and I never looked back. So, you know what I'm saying? Or, I was, you know, I was the queen of the school. You know what I'm saying? I met this guy. He was an athlete or whatever. He was best dressed. You know, he started me off smoking cigarettes. Then he graduated me to weed. Then he started lacing the weed. Then it turned into sherm. And now I'm whacked out of my mind. But I was the, the, the pretty girl in the school. You know, the best dress, the best look in high school. And now half your hair fell out. You're sleeping outside. You know what I'm saying? And it's like. What are they really doing to clean these streets up? But I just seen something about it in California that they um they got they call little houses, so they just made a community. I think a two two block community for the homeless. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean that was a good thing to do. So if they ready to finally all this world attention that they've been getting on Skid Row and all these people that's living on Skid Row due to them even being from California and it's so expensive to live there that that backfired on them. You know what I'm saying? They, they, uh, they, um, gentrification backfired. Let's raise up the rent and run these people out of here. And then once they do that, now you got these people living on the street. You know what I'm saying? You got these people living on the street. So now, these kids, you're not thinking of everybody as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Now, the parents living in the street, she got to drag the child in the street. Who trying to sleep amongst rats and ants? Like, nobody trying to... Cold conditions. You know? It's just sad overall. But the first thing they do, Forbes magazine, they want to tell you who all these billionaires is and philanthropists and all this. And it's not trickling back down to us. So somebody is doing some stealing. Somebody doing some good stealing. Because I don't see where the money going to. They donating to all these. Uh, the Red Cross should be worth 
trillions of dollars. Cause let them tell it, them was like some of the first first people. Red Cross, Red Cross, everything was Red Cross. Then was Red Cross, Blue Shield, all this. They should they should have a trillion dollars over there, if not more. So why Red Cross, Blue Shield, and them? Why they not cleaning up the streets? It's just like if I was a um, a basketball player, Kevin Garnett, for instance. Chi-Town, you know, by the way, uh, uh, Carolina, Carolina, by the way, Chi-Town. But, hey, y'all know KG from the Chi. So, anyway, they give me $127 million. Now, I'm going to find the family members that don't drink, don't smoke, got their head on right, been having a job as long as I knew them. And I'm going to go sit down with four or five of them, and I say, hey, man, you know, if you wasn't working that job, and you had access to a million dollars, what would you do with it? You know? So then I would say, okay, because I just had got word that it's a blank, it's a black bank that's going into foreclosure or whatever that need to be be a bailout. It need to be saved. Why these artists not coming together to really help save their own cities, you know what I'm saying, too. We got the Regal Theater. I know Kanye was supposed to buy it, and then I heard uh, Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce was supposed to buy it. Now, a few people was upset about that, you know what I'm saying, because they like, why they can't buy the Apollo, or why she can't buy whatever in Houston? Why do they got to come buy something in Chicago? You know, Common should have bought it, you know what I'm saying? Common can still probably buy the Regal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who else we got? Lorenz Tate, like Wood Harris. We got uh, Derrick Rose. We got enough people from Chicago that can put their minds and money together to create something to help these children. But instead, a lot of these guys that I mentioned, and females as well, they done moved out of here. So it's like, you know, uh, would it be something Jennifer Hudson would be interested in? You know, she could have a, a hard time with Chicago due to her losing her family, you know, and feel like I'm not doing nothing for the whole city. But the city is not responsible for what happened. That was a tragic situation. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of our people do that. You know, they blame the whole city for whatever happened to them per se you know so i just feel like i and i noticed that that's what happened because i get the calls all the time oh gee why you keep your house in chicago why do you stay there you know i got multiple homes you know what i'm saying i can travel i i you know what i'm saying but i feel like this is my home you know chicago is home you know i understand i'm out here i know it's over 200 and some carjackings you know uh i want to see the guys this jumping out with these guns because they young as 14 years old jumping out with these guns taking these cars i want to see who is the people that own these chop shops because basically when something spike like that is because money attached money involved so they didn't they didn't like a black market everywhere they didn't got a hold to some chop shops the chop shops probably paying five thousand ten thousand for these uh, straight eight and um Hellcat motors. So any Hellcat straight at straight eight track halt, your life is in danger. Five thousand or ten thousand, and you might only be leasing this car. So people are dying over cars that they leasing. They can't even afford these cars. They 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 able to afford to lease it. They not able to afford to buy it off cash. You know what I'm saying? So. Once again, you jumping out, robbing a person that really ain't got more than you, you know? And it's like, so they found one, I guess, chop shop, or they found one area that they've been stashing these cars, you know what I'm saying? So I guess, you know, they didn't got to the bottom of that. And just the other day, somebody was just showing me that uh, the police are riding around in these Hellcats and straight eights now. So and some guys jumped out to try to jack them, and the police jumped out. So now you got them four or three locked up now. Good thing they're alive because 
it's kind of odd that four or three guys jump out with guns drawn only for the doors to open to it to be the police and the police don't shoot them and kill them. So that was kind of shocking, you know what I'm saying? But I hopefully, hopefully they can learn from their mistakes with that. And that just happened in Chicago the other day. Um, I was actually waiting on a guy to send me that video because I was going to um, post that, you know, but I'm speaking on it now. So that's just my thing, y'all. Like, I don't knock nobody for they hustle, but when you, but when it's to the point of somebody else's life is in danger for something that you're reporting and you're not mindful of that, uh, or the distasteful things like people posting when the young guys out here got killed or stabbed or whatever, like no family want to see that. You know what I'm saying? I had my run in with um, World Star. You know, little guy that was on World Star, he he a nephew to me. You know what I'm saying? His his grandmama raised me as her own son, so he a nephew to me. You know, and he was on he was on on social viral. You know, his baby mama was pregnant, and they shot the car up. You know what I'm saying? Killed him and shot her, and they put it on World Star. So I'm like, damn, y'all that thirsty for some likes and views that y'all would actually post something like that. And you know, they didn't posted a lot of most stuff, just just as worse, you know what I'm saying? But I made my business to reach the top of World Star and tell them, hey man, take that down. You know what I'm saying? So I salute World Star for honoring my request and to the family. You know what I'm saying? Because of course, that meant the world to them. Like no no mother wanna see her child getting shot down with with the background noise and everything played out over and over again for the world to see. Like, nobody is thinking how, how hurtful that is. You know, like I say, we was, I think we was the first city that had a murder captured on live, go live and a person get killed. And then from that point on, everything just went haywire. Now it, it was happening more and more often. You know what I'm saying? But I don't have a problem with Everybody not going to get along. I understand that. A lot of guys have a lot of testosterone. I understand that. Some want to fight, but when they fight, if they lose, they don't like to be a loser. So now they want to get the knife. Now they want to come back with the gun. So that's why I say I work more on the prevention side of things because of knowing that, you know, a person to say, yeah, we can fight, we can fight, but as soon as you whoop them, they upset all over again. Now they want to defeat you. How could they defeat you? So they know they can't beat you with the hands. So now they want to bring weapons in involved. You see what I'm saying? So that's why my whole thing be like prevent it all. If it's a misunderstanding, if it's an argument, let's leave it at that. Agree to disagree and walk on. Because once you say, well, we can fight it out. Everybody not going to take that fight and hug afterwards like they show you in sports. They show you that in sports after the knockout, they greet each other, you know what I'm saying, and go on about their way. So it's examples that show how certain things could be, but people look past that. People in the ring do that, and they get in a bankroll for it. People in the street do that, and they want to kill you. They get beat up, they ready to kill you. They, they want to catch you quick and kill you. You know, so... It's just sad overall. I just hope we can fix it. I just hope our people can stop selling out for likes and views, um, for the clout. You know, they say speaking into existence, and that's what I'm doing. You know, all of those uh, uh, bloggers that's distasteful and posting these things and instigating these kids' children's lives. Y'all ain't going to have nothing but the worst luck on y'all. Y'all ain't going to have no good luck, bro. Y'all ain't going to have no good luck slandering people's name and even the sisters that I see doing it. You know what I'm saying? They got podcasts and all that, and the first thing they do, they jump on there slandering somebody with no fact. The, the people that's looking at this stuff for entertainment, y'all have to be held accountable as well because y'all are the people that they putting this show on for. So when something not right, start pulling that. You know what I'm saying? Start pulling it. Pull away. Unsubscribe. Let them feel it. Start unsubscribing. Because once y'all start unsubscribing, they'll have to 
they'll have to reroute. Like, damn, I'm losing followers. Oh, man, I'm losing subscribers. And they're going to understand. People is, is serious about what's being said. We tired of reading about these kids getting slaughtered in the street like animals, man. We tired of it. So the parents need to stand up. The family members need to stand up and hold these bloggers accountable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even with the musicians. I know they say it's hard on musicians. It's a freedom of speech. They speaking on what they grew up rapping, I mean, listening to and things of that nature. But everybody got to be accountable for their actions now. You got to be. You know what I'm saying? Every video, I want to say, I, you know, um, I apologize. You know, I am the trendsetter of the guns in the video. It was a live situation happening, and it got captured on Smack DVD. You know what I'm saying? But it was a gang fight that broke out in a club in California, and I had to back out two, two bangers, you know what I'm saying, to secure me and mine. And it was captured on, T on on Smack DVD on his camera. So ever since then, every video, every interview, that's all you seen. People with guns and guns. So I sincerely apologize for starting that trend. That was a real life situation. And it wasn't supposed to be a trend. You know what I'm saying? I really was in a position to where I had to protect me and mine, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it got captured, you know what I'm saying, on camera, and it spiraled out of control. So I simply, deeply apologize for that, you know what I'm saying? Even though it was a real-life situation going on, but it was looked at as if something tough or braggadocious in the kids linked on to that in every video you've seen after they was flashing guns. So once again, I, I sincerely apologize for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to sign out right now. Um, let's stand for something, y'all, to fall for anything. Capone.